what I want you guys to do is open up your books to page two. We're going over positive integral indices, i.e. exponents. If you don't remember what an exponent is, let's review back to third grade. Say you have something like 5 times 5 times 5. What does this x mean? Multiply. multiply. And when we look at this, how, what number are we multiplying? Five. 5. So if I wanted to keep going and say I put another 5 there, this is a lot of writing. Math people are very lazy, so they come up with nice, easy ways to write things. Instead of writing 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, they just write, well, we have the same number 5, and we have 4 of them. So that's what we call 5 to the 4th power, which just means 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. Now, again, it doesn't mean 20. It means, f what's 5 times 5? 25. And then 25 times 5? 125. And 125 times 5, I'm assuming, I think that's 625. So that's a pretty big number. So when it comes to multiplying, you're multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. Now, we're going to go over what these mean. We'll just go a little vocabulary. That 5, that big number, we just call the base or the bottom. It's all about that base. No trouble? Got it? Okay. This guy is called the exponent. So when I say a base, we're talking about that number that we're multiplying over and over and over again. Now, there are beautiful little, well, they're not rules, they're just observations people have made when you're multiplying by the same number over and over again. So you don't have to keep writing so many big things or do so much work to get an answer. You can use your observational skills. As we go over some of these laws of indices or the laws of exponents, we have one, two, three, four, five laws of exponents we're going over today. So. We'll add on to that laws of exponents. So imagine if you have 6 to the third power times 6 to the fourth power. To figure that out or to shorten that, to simplify it, you look at that and what does 6 to the third power mean? 6 times 6 times 6. Times six. Yikes, be careful. Times. What does 6 to the fourth power mean? 6 times 6 times 6 times 6. Oh, so how many 6's do we have here? Oh, so how could I rewrite this thing then? Yeah, I can write it as 6 to the 7th power. So that's the first law of exponents. When you're multiplying, just add the exponents together. Just make sure the base has to be the same. It doesn't work if I had this. 6 to the 3rd power times 5 to the 4th power. If I look at that, that's 6 times 6 times 6. That's a times. That means 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. I can't combine anything there because the numbers aren't the same. So they have to have the same base. So what do you think we have to do when we're dividing? I think subtracting. That would seem to make sense because subtracting is the opposite of multiplying. I'm sorry. Dividing is the opposite of multiplying, so subtracting is the opposite of adding. So let's take a look-see right here. What if we had 8 to the 5th power divided by 8 to the 3rd power? If I were to rewrite this thing, how many 8's would go up on top? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And how many would go on the bottom? Good. 1, 2. What can I do with this 8 and this 8, student? Well, not subtract it. They cancel each other out because what's 8 divided by 8? One, so they cancel each other out. Eight divided by eight. Eight divided by eight. How many eights do I have left? Two. I have two. So my final answer is just eight to the second power. So y you're right. Let's do five minus three to subtract. If I had a problem like this, it's not in the book, but I'll extend it here. If I had eight to the three on top and eight to the fifth on the bottom, if I do this again, one, two, three. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'll do the exact same thing. I'll 8 divided by 8 is 1, that goes away. 8 divided by 8 is 1, that goes away. 8 divided by 8 is 1, that goes away. But where are my two 8s? 
they're on the bottom. So that's 8 to the second power on the bottom. And what goes on top? Zero. Well, what's 8 divided by 8? Yeah, it's 8 divided by 8 is 1. And what's 1 times 1 times 1? One? 1. So it works both ways. Just realize if the bigger number is on the bottom, and if you got nothing on top, just put a 1 up there. So if I had, <clears throat> give me a number. 9, I'll put a number 7 on there. 7 to the third power to the second power. What do you think the answer is here? So this 7 to the third power means what? 7 times 7 times 7, and all that to the second power. What does to the second power mean? There's how many of them? Two. Two of what? Two of these. Well, how many 7s are in here? So that becomes 7 times 7 times 7 times, I'll put that in parentheses, another 7 times 7 times 7. Oh, so how many 7s do you see there? Oh, so this is 7. I'll write it over here. Final answer is 7 to the 6th power. So I had a 3 here, a 2 he up here, and the answer is a 6. So what is a nice little thing, what is a nice shortcut? Yeah, just 3 times 2. Just multiply these two numbers to get that one. So, the fourth law, law number 4. If you had something like this, now let's say all these had the same base. They were all 7s in that case. Here, if I had 8 to the third power times 7 to the third power, there's a nice shortcut way of writing that. I look at that, and I have an 8, I have a 7, I have a 3, and I have a 3. This becomes 8 times 8 times 8 times 7 times 7 times 7. It doesn't matter what order you do it in, just rearrange it, you'll still get the same answer. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to alternate the 8s and 7s. I'm going to make this 8 times 7 times 8 times 7 times 8 times 7. Also, a property you learned way back in the day, is that it doesn't matter how you group them. I can group these two together. That's called the associative property, by the way. I can group these together, and I can group these together. Well, doesn't this thing look exactly like this thing? Look exactly like this thing? So how many of these 8 times 7s do you see there? Three. three. So the exponent can go right up there. So if I have something like this, where I have two different bases, but they have the same power, just Put those two bases in parentheses and put it all to the same power. Last but not least, and it's going to be the last thing. For the fifth law, if you take a look at that bottom one, it's the same idea if I had 8 to the third over 7 to the third. This just basically means 8 over 7 to the third power. Say, well, why do I really care about that? Now watch this. Dividing is wonderful, because if it with dividing it helps out a lot. Because if I had eight to the third power over four to the third power, I don't have to do eight times eight times eight and four times four times four, then divide. I could look at this and say, oh, you know what? I know this automatically means eight divided by four to the third power. What's eight divided by four? Two to the third power. Boom. So my final answer is just two times two is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. But we're not going to actually multiply it out. So those are our five rules of exponents. And thus endeth the lesson and close. If you want to see a video that might interest you, click on this box right here. For a previous video, click this one right here. Alright, the end.